Welcome back. In this last video in our tables module, we'll be looking at how we can add new records to a table. So there's many different ways to do that. And we're going to look at two of the easiest, which are insert and upsert. So we'll be looking at both of these and how they differ for unkeyed versus keyed. So with insert, the first thing to know is that it requires persistence of the data. So we must amend the table globally by passing the back tick here in front in order to use this version. And this is going to overwrite a table if you have it already. And if you don't have that table defined globally already, it will create a new table. So let's look at an example. So I'm going to create a table trade here. So trade exists and I'm going to add one new row. I'm going to add um, a symbol and then a size and a price here. And I'm going to use the insert keyword. And you'll see here, I'm able to do that. I've created an empty table up above. So you see beforehand, I had no rows. When I run this syntax with the back tick, what I get returned is the index that it was inserted at. So if we just run now trade to see, we've got one entry in our table. Now, if you try to run this without the back tick in front of trade, we get a type error. So we must have the back tick here in order to persist that. And you'll see now I'm getting index of one. So you'll see if I run trade again, I have two rows and so on. Now this here will also overwrite a table if you have it on disk. So um, it's good to be careful using this um, and just be aware of what you're doing. Um, so have a go with this exercise. So inserting a new row into the quote table with these values. Um, now this here is using um, a list. We can also pass a dictionary um, into our insert keyword. So you'll see here, I've got price, sim and size. So you'll see they're actually in a different order than my order of my table. Um, and that doesn't matter. So you'll see I'm able to insert to trade again and it adds that new row and it reshuffled these around. It was clever enough to know which was supposed to be where. Okay, so that's an unkey table. Let's look at how that might differ for key tables. So um, it looks very similar as we did above. So I've got a new table here, trade key with my symbol column keyed. Again, it's, um, it's typed, but it's empty. And then I'm gonna run the insert notation again, passing one row. So that looks the same. It was able to input that um, and that's fine. I'm gonna run it again and that's okay as well. So that works in the very same way. The difference being when you try and add a new key that's got the same key as one that's existing in the table. So BP we already had, I'm gonna get an insert error. So it won't let you insert a new key that already exists in the table. Okay. And we can also do bulk inserts as well using insert. So um, if I have a list on my right hand side, so I've got two symbols, two longs, and then two floats here, I'm able to insert two rows at once into my table. So that's very handy when I've got um, many things I want to insert into the table. So doing this with a general list here is very common. Um, we can also insert using a dictionary. Um, but we have to vary it slightly. So we've seen above, we were able to use a dictionary here when we just had one value um, for each of the, the values in the, the dictionary. But when I have a column dictionary or multiple values here, so instead of just one symbol, I've got two, two longs and two prices. If I try and run that, I'll get a type error. So what I need to do is just specify value here. So if we look at the difference between these two, one is listing my keys and my values and one is just the values. So if I take away this, so this form doesn't work when I've got more than one entry here um, on the, the value side and I must just pass only the values um, without the key side and that will work okay. So you see I've now been able to add on to my trade table and if we check have we got these new values, we do. We've got the new Microsoft and JPM values here added on. So it's just a bit of a nuance um, to be aware of. And our other option is to insert with another table. So here we've got, um, we're creating a table um, and we're gonna use our flip command that we've seen before. So if we have our dictionary here on the right hand side and we run flip, um, if this is a column dictionary, we're able to flip that into a table so you'll see I'm just simply then passing that table directly into trade 
and I shall get two new rows with KX added on to the bottom. Okay. Um, we're also just showing again, reordering the table. It doesn't have any effect. So if we had a table, instead of having the input table, sim size price matching um, the table we want to input into. So these have the same ordering of columns if we shuffle them about a bit. So we're able to do that using the take operator. So if we reorder them, you'll see instead of having sim size price, I have size price sim. And then if I insert with that ordering, um, it's gonna allow me to add those on similarly. So it doesn't have any effect. KDB is clever enough to understand what you're trying to do there and put them in the right place, which is very handy for us. And we can also just pass um, some of the columns. So we don't have to pass them all. And what happens is null data is populated. So we see that as general pattern when we don't have certain columns, we'll get null value. So in this example, I'm just passing the sim and the size. Um, so you'll see here, rather than getting the prices, um, it will let me do the insert, but they will be null. And these rules apply the same for key tables. Um, this example here was all showing with the unkey table. Um, when it's a key table, we must just make sure the keys don't already exist in the table or it won't work. So here I added two new keys that didn't exist and I was able to do the insert by flipping my dictionary here. So this is a table on the right hand side. And you note that this here table doesn't need to be keyed. So your insert table doesn't need to be keyed um, when you're inputting into a key table, but your keys must not exist in the table you're inserting to. Okay. So have a go at this exercise. Um, and now we're going to look at the second way um, to add data to our table, or the second most common way, and that's using upsert. So the main difference between upsert and insert is with insert, we need to persist that action and persist that table um, update. So we use the back tick. With upsert, we can choose to do that, or we also have the option of not doing that, um, which is very useful to us as well. So basically we can have the back tick or we don't need to have the back tick here. So if we create a new table again to trade, um, it's typed, but it's empty. I'm gonna upsert, first of all, using the back tick, I'm gonna pass in a list here. Then I'm gonna upsert using a dictionary. And you'll see with both, they worked um, just as well as each other. And my new table trade has been persisted. Now, if I use it without the back tick, you'll see I can run this and when I run this line, what's returned to the terminal is the new row added on. But actually, if I check the trade table, it's back to the original definition. So this is not persisted. This action is not persisted, um, which is known as bypassing, um, which can be really useful when you're kind of just testing something out um, and you don't want to save it necessarily or overwrite the table. Okay, um, with a key table, upsert works in the exact same way as here. Um, the only thing to note um, is that if your key already exists in the table, it will overwrite that value or those values you have for that key. So remember with insert, we weren't able to insert with the, the same key um, for a key table. With upsert, we are, are able to, but it will overwrite that um, value. So I've got trade key here before. Remember, it's just two rows long. I'm going to add a new row with for BP. So I've got my trade key table. So we've got four rows. If I try and upsert BP and then I check trade key, you'll see BP has now become 205.33. That is updated because I have the back tick here. And that's persisted, which is why when I check the trade key definition, we see it's now being altered. So of course, if we wanted to persist the change by putting it in a new table, we could, instead of using the back tip, call it something outside in front, pass it the colon operator, and that way we can have the old version, which is trade key, which will be unchanged. So in this example here, I've got FD was 102. So if I run this, I check trade key, the old version, it's still gonna be 102. And my new version here, trade key two, is gonna be the 400 here and 10.13. So that's really useful to us. Obviously we can have the old version and the new version. Um, so another exercise here, just to test that. Um, and then finally, we look at bulk upsetting. So this is very similar again to doing bulk inserting, um, but the main difference being you have to arrange the data row by row in order to upsert 
by bulk. So you'll see here by row by row, I mean, we're listing out the entire row. So each value for each row and then each row here afterwards. So with the insert, it was arguably a little easier to read. You put all your symbols together for your first column, then the second column, then the third column. Up here, it's row by row. So if we do that, you'll see the trade table now has two new records, KX and FD added on. And as with insert, we can use tables as bulk values themselves. So instead of passing lists or dictionaries, we're able to pass tables themselves. So I can actually observe trade to trade and it's just gonna duplicate my table and append on all these values um, again here. Now that hasn't been persisted. I would need to do either this or this to persist that, which I'm not gonna do right now. Um, and we can also use um, a dictionary structure as a means of observing data. So we've got two options here. We can either flip um, our value of our dictionary. So again, if we have this value of the dictionary, we just get the volume columns returned. So you see here, I'm not getting the key sim size and price, I'm just getting the right hand side. Now, if I flip that, what would happen is I get this row by row format that's required. And then alternatively, if I just flip the entire dictionary, which is the second example, I'm creating this table structure. So both of those work. Um, so either row by row or table for our upsert by bulk for upsetting bulk values. And again, missing columns will be handed with nulls. So if we try to upsert, say we've got this dictionary and we're only gonna pull out the sim and the size, it's actually been flipped to a table here. You'll see that the price values here are just, um, are just nulls. Okay, and that's it for our tables module. We've got an exercise at the end just to finish off. Um, we've covered a lot in this module, one of the biggest I think we've seen. Um, we've gone through how we can discover tables within our namespace. So remember we've seen we can use that tables command. We looked at using meta with the table schema. We looked a lot at the difference between our unkeyed tables and our key tables um, and how to create both of those. We know we can change a key table from an unkeyed table and vice versa and how to do that using X key. Then we also looked at creating tables from scratch with that table notation, then accessing tables. So we have seen dot notation and the backtick notation, as well as the um, key notation when we have key tables. And then finally, we looked at inserting data. So we looked at both insert and upsert. So there's a lot to take in there. Um, definitely spend some time going through these examples, checking out the links that are linked throughout the module and also going to our exercises where you'll find lots more examples in order to test out your knowledge and work through the concepts we've covered in this course. Okay, so thank you very much and I'll see you in another module very soon, hopefully.